the um, the basis for what establishes input-output analysis are a few relatively simple relationships of national accounting, and they are contained, for example, in this uh, in this uh, SNA uh, handbook. And there, if you want, there are simple you could say uh, balance, balance relationship or balance equations. You have them in, in, in natural sciences all the time, for example, as mass balances or flow balances, but they apply equally to, to monetary flow. Because uh, at a business level, in the long term, you, uh, it must be that, that the sum of all expenditures must be uh, the sum of, of revenues, otherwise a, a, a company would go belly, belly up, and it's no different in, uh, in national accounting. So, for example, I want to the blackboard. For any economy, the, um, the total supply of goods and services or gross output, X out, must be the total uses of goods and services, X in. Okay? Now, Try and see what uh, what uh, this uh, this means. You can look at this at this um, flow balance balance in th in three different ways. And in fact, these three different ways of of looking at this this flow balance are also reflected in the way statistical agencies calculate GDP. Because you can look at those. From an, um, from an expenditure side, uh, uh, from, an, from an income side, and from a production side. So these are three ways of calculating GDP. Say, um, total output, you can say, or oh, this is total domestic output plus imports. Oh, let's make it in. Let's to sorry, total domestic users plus imports, which means that some of the some of the inputs that the economy needs are produced domestically, but some of the inputs that the economy needs they have to source it from overseas. Okay. Now, where do these inputs go? I'll write this down. Go. Um, this is intermediate consumption plus final consumption, I'll explain these terms, uh, plus gross fixed, gross uh, capital formation, plus exports. Okay, now there's a lot of new terms, I'll explain them in detail one after the other. Okay, as we, s we saw um, here on top, Gross output or gross input is the value of all goods and services that are produced or used by all establishments in an economy, no matter the origin. Okay. Now here you can see that it's broken down into domestic and domestic users and imports. I'll read the definition of imports or foreign trade. Exports and imports between the domestic economy and the rest of the world a transaction between residents and non-residents of an economic territory. No, you would you would think that's that's something that that uh, is quite quite common. And it's, uh, imports have been part of common language, so that's nothing surprising. So exports you explained well, but these three terms they're probably not so so well known in in, in common uh, parlance. So they need a bit further explanation. Okay, let's start with intermediate consumption. I'll read you the definition and then you may ask some questions. Um, intermediate consumption includes goods and services which are entirely used up by producers in the course of production to produce output of goods and services during the accounting period. So, this term here means it is something that is used to produce other goods. And here, with the definition of that, you can see straight away the contrast between this item, which is final consumption, which I'll read to you. Final consumption includes goods and services which are used by households or the community 
to satisfy their individual wants and social needs. Okay? So in here, what actors could that be? Because we went through all the actors previously, right? Which actors would you assign to these two types of, of, uh, of use of goods and services? To this one, you'd use uh, non-financial and financial corporations. And for this one, you would allocate households and the general government, right? Example here. Because both households and general government, they consume goods and services for final use. They don't produce anything, right? After that, um, basically the, uh, the goods and services produced go to the, to the waste, to waste stream. And they're not, they're not used to produce anything else. Which leaves us to explain this, this final item here. Gross capital formation in the system of national accounts is the same as the concept of investment in capital goods. So in common parlance it's called investment, but in SNA it's called gross capital formation. Gross capital formation measures the addition to the capital stock of buildings, equipment and in, in the inventories. That is the additions to the capacity to produce more goods and income in the future. Okay. Now remember when I explained intermediate consumption, the definition included um, the, uh, the usage of, of goods and services during the accounting period. Okay? And that's an important, an important uh, term when you distinguish these, uh, this intermediate consumption from gross fixed capital formation. All accounts are, are constructed for one financial year or calendar year. It depends uh, uh, from which country. But well, let's assume they're, they're constructed for a calendar year. Then everything that's being used for production within that calendar year goes into intermediate uh, use or intermediate consumption. Everything that is being produced to facilitate production beyond that calendar year, that's what we call investment because you know, a building, for example. You may build a building for, for a number of years before it can actually be used to produce something. And so for those years when that production is not current, it goes into gross capital formation. Okay? And then eventually it's being used to, uh, to produce uh, other goods and services. But whilst an exp uh, a, a consumption or a use of some uh, input is not current, meaning being used for producing in the calendar year, it gets allocated to this. This is the convention. 